Hi there, seventh graders. It's Mrs. Sullivan. This is your first official flipped classroom video. Um, before we start unit one in your textbook, we wanted to go over some things that were certain you've covered before in fifth grade or sixth grade, but it's so important for our first unit and for the rest of the year that we wanted to just refresh your memory on two important topics, order of operations and substitution. First, we're going to start with order of operations. Operations in math are things like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, so we're not talking about the ER or anything like that. So order of <laughs> operations refers to the order in which all math problems must be completed. The must is important there. You have to follow these rules. It's like if there was no speed limit, there would be craziness on the roads. Must be completed in order to get the correct answer. So you may have heard this little phrase PENDAS, which, you know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the P being the parentheses, those always come first. Then if they're an exponent, those are little raised numbers, they're tiny. Then multiplication and division, always in order from left to right. So what that means is if you have a problem that just has multiplication and division, just go through it like you would read a sentence. And the same thing for addition and subtraction, just from left to right. Okay, so here we have our first example. We have 25 minus 4. Not sure if you recognize this. If there's no symbol between the 4 and the parentheses, that means that there's multiplication right there. And then we have parentheses. So following our order of operations, we know we have to do parentheses first, so we're going to take care of that. This gives me 6. I'm going to plug in now a multiplication symbol. I'm going to use a little dot. I'm just rewriting everything. Now I have subtraction and multiplication. You should recognize that we're going to multiply first. This makes 24, and we're going to subtract that from 25. So 25 minus 24 is 1. All right, our next example. We have addition, parentheses, and multiplication. We are going to always do parentheses first. 6 minus 3 is 3. I'm going to rewrite everything. It's always a good idea. I know it takes like two extra seconds to rewrite everything, but it's a good idea just to keep everything very in order. Now I have addition and multiplication. Multiply first. 3 times 2 is 6. Going to add that to 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. All right. Look at our next one. We have division and multiplication. A lot of you are very convinced that you always have to multiply before you divide, but remember back up here where it says solve from left to right. So we're literally going to just go from left to right. So I'm going to take 40 divided by 5 first, and that gives me 8. Then I'm going to multiply that by 2. That gives me 16. All right, another one of those. I have multiplication and division only. So I'm just going to go from left to right. A lot of you look at this and you want to do 3 times 6 and 9 times 4 and then divide your two answers and that's just going to mess you up. So we're just going to go from left to right. This gives me 18. I'm going to rewrite everything. Now I'm going to do 18 divided by 9. That's 2. Then times 4. That gives me 8. Alright, they're getting longer. All right, here I have division, addition, and more division. So you are going to divide first in both sets. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then we're just going to bring this addition sign straight down, and that gives you 5. All right, last one of the order of operations. Oof, it's a doozy. All right. So we've got a lot going on here. We have division, multiplication, addition. Remember, right in between here is multiplication. And then, of course, we have parentheses. Parentheses are always first. But then look at what we have inside the parentheses. You have subtraction and multiplication. You still have to follow your order of operations inside the parentheses. 3 times 2 is 6. I'm just rewriting everything because that's what I do. And Mrs. Trombley will too, because we're like the same person. You'll remember that. All right, it's very sloppy, but you'll look. Okay, so I'm gonna take care of this, that's zero. Times two, plus four, times three. I'm like writing backwards, it's a skill. All right, so we have division, multiplication, multiplication here. I'm going to, hmm, 
Well, we can divide here. That gives me 10 times 4 plus, we're going to take care of this right now. 2 times 0, that's 0. So what's 10 times 4? 40 plus 0, hmm, that's 40. All right, I am going to let Mrs. Trombley take care of substitution. She drew the short straw. <laughs> <laughs> I get to substitute. <laughs> All righty. So substitution. That just refers to replacing a variable with the amount it represents in order to evaluate an expression. It also refers to the time when you do the happy dance to walk in your classroom and you see, oh, there's a different teacher there. Excitement. <laughs> so we're going to use it for math today. All right, so when you see this word evaluate, it's not a trick word. It just means to solve. You're figuring out the answer. So answer each expression using A is 2, B is 3, and C is 4. So basically, your job is to replace the letter A whenever you see it with 2, replace B with 3, replace C with 4, and then we're going to do what you just did with Mrs. Sullivan. We'll follow order of operations and solve it. All right, so A is 2. I'm going to replace this A with 2, bring down the operation. B is 3, C is 4. This is all addition, and I can just solve addition from left to right. So 2 plus 3 is 5, and I still have plus 4, 5 plus 4. That gives me 9, and you are done. All right, over here, I have C plus A times B. So C is 4, and then we have plus. And A next to B, now some, some of you might look at this and say, oh, that's 23, because A is right next to B. That's not what it means. When you have two variables right next to one another, it means multiplication. So A, B actually means 2 times 3. Now we have addition and multiplication. Solve your multiplication first. So 3 times 2, 2 times 3, potato, potato. That equals 6, and I still have to bring down this 4, and I'm left with 4 plus 6, which is 10. So you see, it's not that bad until we get to the last two. <laughs> Just wait. Okay, so now I have BC minus AB. Again, B is next to C. That means multiplication. So what I'm really doing here is taking 3 times 4, bring down subtraction, AB would be 2 times 3. So I have multiplication, I have subtraction. You need to solve all multiplication before subtraction, so I'm going to go ahead and do these both here. 3 times 4, that's 12. 2 times 3, that's 6. Now I can go ahead and subtract because the multiplication is all done. 12 minus 6 is 6. All right, next example. 5C minus 2 times the quantity of AB. That's a fancy way of saying AB are in parentheses. The quantity <laughs> of. Use that one at home. All right, so 5C. This means 5 times C. So a number next to a variable also means multiplication. Copy everything else. There's that 2. Here's my parentheses. AB, that's going to mean 2 times 3. Okay, a couple things going on. Oof. But if you refer back to your PEMDAS list, the P <laughs> stands for parentheses. So let's solve inside here. 2 times 3, that's 6. So I'm going to rewrite the rest of this. And remember, a number next to those parentheses means multiplication, so I'm going to use the dot at this point. If you wanted to put 6 in parentheses, you could. doesn't matter. Same, same answer. All right, we see that we have multiplication and subtraction left. I'm going to solve all of my multiplication first, because that has to happen before I can subtract. So 5 times 4, that's 20. 2 times 6, that's 12. Now I can subtract. I'm just bringing that down, and 20 minus 12 is 8. All right, almost there. 10A minus BC divided by A. Okay, so 10 next to the A means I am taking 10 times the value of A, which we already said was 2. Bring down that subtraction sign. BC means that I'm going to take 3 times 4. And I'm supposed to divide that by whatever A is. Okay, yeah. I know. <laughs> so we have multiplication, we have subtraction, we have division, all kinds of things going on. I'm just going to take this one from left to right. I'm not going to try to do more than one step at a time because I can make errors that way. And this is live. <laughs> I don't want to make any mistakes. There's a lot of pressure. <laughs> all right, one step at a time. 10 times 2. That is 20. I'm going to rewrite the whole rest of the problem. Okay, now I see this subtraction sign here. I can't do any subtraction. I have to multiply and divide before I do that from left to right. 
So now let's take care of this multiplication because that happens before the division happens going from left to right. So rewrite 20 minus and 3 times 4 is 12 and I still have this divided by 2. All right, now division happens before subtraction, so we take care of our division. 12 divided by 2 is 6. I still have 20 minus in the front of that, and 20 minus 6 is 14, and you're done. Okay, Ooh. so you haven't seen anything with exponents yet. The little numbers, they're so cute. They are. They prefer to be called exponents, though, <laughs> rather than little 2, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> it's like getting your name wrong, you know, it's so annoying, so don't call it little 2, call it an exponent. exponent of 2. All right, let's replace, let's substitute. 12 minus 3, okay, a next to b means 2 times 3. I'm supposed to subtract c, which is 4, raised to the second power. All right, parentheses need to happen first, and you have to follow order of operations inside those parentheses. So we see we have multiplication, we have subtraction. Let's take care of our multiplication first. 2 times 3 is 6. I still have to subtract 4, and that's all still in parentheses. We haven't taken care of that yet going to write down the rest. Okay, we still have parentheses going on, so let's take care of that. So now we have 12 minus the 3 still, and I have 6 minus 4. That's 2. I'm actually going to keep the parentheses around it just so you can see it does mean the same exact thing. So you see a couple different examples, and that 2 is still there. Okay, now this is where so many people want to say, oh, well, 12 times 3 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, and just go from left to right. You can't. You have to follow order of operations, and order of operations says that next we're supposed to take care of exponents because there's no problems left to solve within the parentheses. There's just one single digit there. So we're going to do that. We're going to take care of 2 squared. 2 squared means 2 times 2. The answer to that is 4. So I'm left with 2 minus 3 times 4. Okay. Again, we need to take care of our multiplication before we subtract. So 3 times 4 is 12. I'm left with 12 minus 12, which is 0. So yes, you did all that for, for nothing. nothing. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.